Allah tells him, وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى Allah tells the Messenger والسلام, and by the way, have you heard about the story of who? Musa alayhi salam. Did the, the news of Musa come to you? Meaning now Allah will tell our Messenger وسلم, you need to take inspiration from what happened with Musa alayhi salam. Now, let me, you guys know the story, but I wanted to highlight one or two things from it. When Musa alayhi salam went up to the mountain, and Allah Azza wa gave him his mission, you know, اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى Go to Fir'aun. Now when you want to go to Fir'aun and talk to him, he is the most powerful political ruler of his time. Many people don't know, he actually was so powerful and so influential that other kingdoms in the world, they used to send their princes and their royal family to get an education in Egypt. Because he was also considered the elite university of his time. Musa alayhi salam is supposed to go back into Egypt where he's wanted for what? He's wanted for murder. He's supposed to make it all the way through Egypt and walk, into the, walk all the way up to the most secure building in the entire land of Egypt. And he's supposed to talk to the security guards who are looking to kill him. The chiefs are making a scheme to kill you. They're not interested in arresting him. They are interested in what? Killing him. And he's supposed to walk up to the most secure building in all of Egypt and arguably the most heavily guarded building in the entire world at the time. He's supposed to walk up to it and say, I need to speak with Fir'aun because Allah has given me a responsibility, I need to go talk to him. And he's supposed to expect that the doors will open wide and they'll say, please sir, would you like some orange juice too? And you know, walk him right in and give him a special VIP meeting with the king. And he's going to stand face to face and then when he sees him, he's going to insult him and tell him, you're not Rabb, I, have the real, I come from the, real, the, real, the true Rabb. You know, what you say is a lie. And he's supposed to insult him to his face. That's what he's supposed to do. This sounds like an easy mission or a difficult mission? <laughs> this is what you call mission impossible. Okay, this is the real mission impossible. Now when you are given an impossible mission, when you are given a very difficult task, you should ask for resources. If Musa alayhi salam is going to be, ha he has the job of talking to the king, maybe he should ask for a helicopter. So he could be dropped right on top. Maybe he should ask for an army, so he can defeat Fir'aun's army and then don't talk to Fir'aun. Maybe he should ask for a lot of money, a lot of resources, maybe a disguise, something. What is he, because he's supposed to ask Allah for help. Because he's given the most difficult mission ever given until that time. What does he ask Allah? قَالَ رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي he says, my Rabb, make my chest, expand my chest for me. What's the first thing he asked? He didn't ask for money, he didn't ask for power, he didn't ask for media resources, he didn't ask for political position. You know the Muslims say today, man, if we had power, our situation would be different. If we had the money, our situation would be different. If we owned the news outlets, our situation would be different. Let me tell you something. The prophets know what to ask. They know what to ask. And they had to deal with media, they had to deal with political corruption, they had to deal with military might. And what's the first thing they asked for? Rabbi Shahli Sadri. Expand my chest. Now, what in the world does that mean? You know what that means? When somebody has in Shirah al Sadr, when their chest is open, you know what that means? They're not bothered, they're calm, they're at peace, they're not depressed, they're not sad, they're not worried. They're not nervous, they're not afraid, they're not negative, they're not pessimistic, they're not hopeless. As a matter of fact, someone who has in Shirah al Sadr, when their chest is opened up, then when you go meet with them, you become calm too. You become positive too, you become happy too. The mission that Allah has given him is so hard, he should be complaining about that every day. Man, our mission is so hard, subhanAllah, every day I try and things get over more difficult, they get even harder. Like you Muslims do today. SubhanAllah, every day there's a new fitna. There's something new happening in the news. First there was this, then there was that, then there was that. There was the shootings in Paris, then there was the shootings in Texas, and there was this in the news and that, and then oh my God, things are getting so bad. And we're constantly negative. And we, don't, we forget that the first thing to ask Allah is what? Rabbi shrahli sadri. Come, open up my chest. We have to understand that the mission Allah gave us, He knows. Which mission is possible and which mission is what? Impossible. And this is a matter of Iman. When we, we believe, 
ghaib. We believe in the unseen. When we see the reality of the money and the propaganda and the media and the corruption and the continued spilled blood and all of it, we start thinking there's no way to win. But you know what? That's when you're tested. Because then you have to believe in what? The unseen. That's when you have to believe the unseen. And where does belief in the unseen rest? In the chest. When you see the reality, you get depressed. And your heart becomes tight. That's why he said in a different surah, وَيَضِيقُ sadri, My chest becomes tight. Here he asks, رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي sadri, Open up my chest. Make me positive. I have to believe that the help of Allah will come. I have to believe. I, it's a matter of my iman. I have to believe that all the media in the world will be crushed. All of it will be crushed by the help of Allah. I have to believe that. My chest has, and I have to be calm about it. I have to be very relaxed and I don't think that I'm crazy. This is actually very logical because when the help of Allah comes, nothing can stop it. In يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ If Allah were to aid you, there's no possibility of anybody overcoming you. Anybody overcoming you. And the first condition of that is the believer has to believe that the help of Allah will come. The believer has to be positive. You know, I'll give you a scenario. I'll, make, I'll, I'll show you a movie scene. Not a real movie, relax. Okay, astaghfirullah, I'm leaving. No, relax. I'll make up a movie for you. So on the one hand, there's an army. Very powerful. Millions of soldiers. And on the other hand, there's one guy. And this whole army approaches this, how many guys? One, and he doesn't even have a weapon. He doesn't even have a weapon. And he's smiling. And he comes to the general of the army and he says, if you know what's good for you, you will turn around and run away. And the entire army is laughing like, <laughs> this guy. We could crush him with one horse. What's he talking about? Except they don't know that he controls airstrikes. <coughs> and they're watching him from satellite. And they can drop bombs on the entire army right there. Laser precise. They have no idea. Why is this guy not nervous? He doesn't have to have an army behind him. Because he has an army where? Above. You can't even see it. Well, you know what? We don't have, we don't have to have an army behind us. Where's our army? Nobody knows the armies of Allah except Him. When you stand by the word of Allah, then the forces of Allah are behind you. Why would you think you're alone? That's a matter of Iman. That's a matter, that's the kind of belief we're supposed to have. That's how positive we're supposed to be. That we can battle anything. We can withstand any pressure, any propaganda, any media. There's nothing. All of that is nothing to Allah. Now, Musa alayhi salam says, Rabbi shahli sadri. And the second thing he asks is, وَيَسِّرْ لِي amri." Make my mission easy for me. Who makes the mission easy? Which means by definition, by default, some of you are technical background, the default position is a mission is hard. And the only one who can make it easy is? Allah Azza wa Jal. And He only makes it easy when first of all you have an open chest. You're positive. And you're a source of positivity for others. Then he acknowledges his own weaknesses. That's the third step. You have to acknowledge where you're missing. What he was missing was sometimes he couldn't speak clearly. So even if you're carrying the word of Allah, your, the word of Allah is perfect, but I'm not perfect. The word of Allah is perfect, but my da'wah is not perfect. And I have to acknowledge what about my da'wah and what about my speech and what about my ability is not perfect. And I have to ask Allah to cover my mistakes. And so he says, Wahlul uqdatan min lisani. Untie the knot in my tongue. I'm not the best speaker. Fir'aun is one of the greatest politicians in human history, which means he's an amazing speaker. Politicians are great speakers. They give speeches regularly. And Musa alayhi salam has a stutter. There's no, no way you can win this debate. So he says, Ya Allah, I have a deficiency. You need to help me with it. I need your help with this deficiency. And then finally, finally, look at this. He says, by the way, what's he going to share before I share this with you? What is the job of Musa alayhi salam? The job of Musa alayhi salam is to share the word of Allah. Yes or no? Yes. But he says, يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي So they understand what I say. What is he going to say? What is he going to say? The word of Allah, isn't it? He's going to say the word of Allah. But the word of Allah should be understandable on its own. 
Why does, what does he have to say? And why didn't he say, so they understand your words? Why did he say, so they understand what? My words. Because the Qur'an is the word of Allah, but on this mic right now is not the, this is my voice. That's my voice. I have to try to explain it. I have to try to express it. And even though the word of Allah is perfect, the way I explain it will be what? Imperfect. And I have to try to make sure people understand. My primary concern is I have to help people understand. So I have to know who I'm talking to. I have to understand what kind of words they can understand. What they find difficult, what they find easy. I, don't, I cannot make things complicated for them. Because I'm concerned about them understanding. In other words, the job of a da'i, the job of someone who carries the word of Allah, his final concern, first you understand where your weaknesses are, then you understand how do you make sure your audience will what? Understand. You don't just start talking, you, I read something in a book and I start talking about it, and I don't care if it was, it was complicated for me, but I enjoyed it, so now I talk in complicated language, nobody understands what I'm saying, but who cares? No, 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 no. I have to speak in the language that people will actually understand. That is the sunnah of Musa alayhi salam. And when that happens, everything will work out. I'll fast forward in the story of Musa alayhi salam. I'll just share one thing with you about Musa alayhi salam. Then I'll give you the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I want you to think about this. Who was supposed to battle with Musa? You know, when he threw the staff and the hand, who was supposed to battle with him? The magicians. You guys know that, yeah? So in Surah Al-Shu'ara, Allah tells us that the magicians were heavily financed. They were gathered from all different cities, the best of them. Gather all the best magicians from all the cities. Fine. Then, they were made popular. In other words, Fir'aun was already humiliated. Everybody knew that Fir'aun was defeated by Musa alayhi salam. So now, Fir'aun looked very bad. So he wanted to make the magicians look good. Okay? So he spread, spent a lot of money and a lot of campaign telling the people that the heroes of Egypt are who? The magicians. And they will save our nation from this threat of Islam. They will pr protect our nation. So you, all the people need to be fans of who? The magicians. So much so that there's an ayah in Surah Al-Shu'ara that people started thinking, لَعَلَّنَا نَتَّبِعُ السَّحَرَ إِمْكَانُهُمُ الْغَالِبِينَ Maybe we'll end up following the magicians if they win. In other words, maybe the government will not even belong to Fir'aun. Maybe the government will go to the magicians. That's how popular they became. That's how popular he made them. And then on top of all of this, People did not want to, you know, Yawm Zina, the day on which the battle was supposed to happen. How do you make sure everybody comes out and watches? Because he wants to make sure the entire country watches this. He needs to make sure everybody sees that Musa has been crushed. So what does he do? We find in the Quran, وَقِيلَ لِلنَّاسِ هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُجْتَمِعُونَ People were told, are you coming or what? People were forced to come out to watch this battle. And everybody was told by the military and by the campaign that your heroes, the one that you will listen to is who? The magicians. I'll fast forward. Musa alayhi salam throws the staff. It eats all of their ropes and their rods. And who falls in sajda? Magicians. And then magicians get up from sajda and they say, Amanna bi rabbil alameen, rabbi Musa wa Harun. We believe in the Rabb. We believe in the Rabb of Musa and Harun. Who paid for the stage? Who paid for all the audience to show up? Who paid for the campaign? Listen to them, listen to them, listen to them. Who spent hundreds of millions of dollars on the campaign so that they could have the biggest stage they ever had and then they could stand on that stage and Musa doesn't even have to do da'wah alayhi salam. They did the da'wah for him. Who paid for it? Hmm. Allah has a plan. You just have to have sharf al-sadr. Open up a chest. That's it. You could have argued 10 minutes before. So many resources. So much money. So much power. How is everybody going to hear the message of Islam? <laughs> and just 10 minutes later, you see what Allah does. You understand? That's why we have Iman, that no matter how bad the resources look on the opposite side, we don't know how Allah can turn them around and make them in our favor. We don't know. I met the minister from Europe who... Uh, was one of the most inst instrumental in Switzerland, who was instrumental in you know, the banning the minarets back in the day, right? And after that, he was actually, he wrote 
against the Prophet ﷺ and they were trying to pass legislation and even encourage people to insult the Prophet in Europe ﷺ, right? they were encouraging this kind of thing and he was on the front of the right wing campaign the guy took shahada he's a Muslim when I met him uh, uh, two years ago almost his son was with him, he's still not Muslim and in that conference he took shahada too subhanallah the people that were the, at the front of hatred against Islam Allah turns their hearts why do we have to be depressed? Why do we have to be negative? So that was the first example, that was the example of Musa alayhi salam.